This podcast is sponsored by the new edition of the Bible for Testing Homes, Home Performance Diagnostics, the guide to advanced testing, with the latest tools and techniques that prove you're worth the extra money. More at homeperformancebook.com. Enjoy. Welcome to the Building Performance Podcast from Green Dream Group in Chicago. I'm Corbett Lunsford. Today, we're talking about trends in high-performance building and retrofits from the front lines with Chase Ming, who is a builder down in Montgomery, Alabama. His company is All Development. Chase, thanks so much for being on the show. You're welcome. So uh, what exactly is your business all about? You, you do real work in real life, and you do it high quality. What does that mean to you? It means everything. When we come in to work on a project for a customer, whether it's a commercial renovation, a historical renovation, a, a new home, or new commercial development, it, it means everything just to, just to be thorough, quality. You're only as good as your last customer, in my opinion. So to me, the most important thing is making sure that customer is, is, gets the highest level of satisfaction when it's done, regardless which project. And how exactly do you go about delivering that? What's your technique? You know, we start, the foundation is our mission statement, over-communicate, exclamation point. You know, and, and we apply that in, in every step from negotiations, design build, the design end of everything, uh, locking down details, signing contracts, following through from, from one end to the other. You, you know, we've been through, I guess, the, the worst most complicated time a contractor could deal with in this business. I've just come to the point of, if I don't know you, we don't work for you. Um, unless you are referred by a past client or referred by somebody in our network that we've dealt with or worked in a legal case with or someone who, who vets us before we ever meet the actual client. And, and that, that's what's, that's our niche. That's what's what we found to work for us. And what does that get you exactly? I mean, when you only accept work from people who come from personal referrals. The most important thing, uh, Corbett, is, is it, you have the trust. You don't have to earn the trust. The trust, there's already trust there. You're not that guy. You're not that firm. You're vetted to a point to the customer before they ever meet you. So it, it having that trust, not being one of the six that are called, not being on the, the bid website or the Dodge or the bid clerk or the state bid, bid website, you know, you're not, you're omitting half the headache in my opinion. Yeah. When you come in, when you come in and you've, been contacted by an individual or a group or a firm, they already know about you. And we haven't so far, and, and this year may be the best we've ever had. And so far, you know, we haven't had to have a website. Hmm. It's, or, you know, we're kind of getting into the social media right now. And, and I think that makes a big difference because you can be vetted in that capacity, but it's just, it hasn't been on the priority list. Mm. And specifically, when you come back to somebody who thinks that their bathroom is going to cost whatever, $17,000, and you come back and you say, actually, it's going to be this much, that personal connection probably helps when you say, you know what, it's it's more than I thought, and here's why. Yeah, that is that is the case. And a lot of times, it, it immediately don't come across as being a high bid. I'll give you a perfect example um, some real close friends of ours, I did a little project to help them out. Um, they put a sign in their yard, my sign, the neighbor called, you know, both the husbands are attorneys. They're the president, vice president of the neighborhood association. So it all just kind of worked. And this is a perfect example of, of being vetted. We go in, they want a 1200 square foot addition in, in the back, a two story addition, we go in, the number comes in really high in my opinion, but we immediately, the trust was there. They, we sat down, we discussed some really expensive features they wanted and, and worked from there and worked back. And, you know, it, before we were done, they asked, what's the next step? 
when can you get started? The, the number was high, higher than anybody else had looked at it. But the difference was I had been vetted prior um, in multiple circles, come to find out. And they just, they were confident and, uh, you know, they had trust and faith that mm-hmm. they would get the better quality work. And that's, that's when that happens, every time it happens, that just confirms in my mind I'm doing something right. I'm making the right decision. So I just try to continue doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. And then go back to the over-communicate exclamation point from front to back you know, through and through, and it just eliminates the 90% of, of what ifs or, you know, what's going to happen next. It, we kind of dial it in, and it works great. Now, you were fortunate to have some marketing and business training, right? <laughs> yes. When when I first started college, I, I was going to go into architecture, and I went to Auburn and was there for, you know, two years into the program and decided I didn't want to sit at the table in a box all day every day. Uh, I, I really enjoy drafting. I really enjoy the design concept, but I'm more of a people person. You know, I have a, a type A personality. I'm, I'm more aggressive and assertive and personal, not to say architects aren't, but architects spend a whole lot of time in the box and that's what they do. And they do good at it. Um, but I realized that wasn't for me. So I, I changed majors and went into uh, marketing and management. Got a double major from Auburn in marketing and management. And uh, did, did real well. Um, so I do have that experience. And you know, if you'd asked me my senior year, what was I going to do, I'd have told you nonprofit work. But I got recruited to work in an industrial and construction field and did real well. Did real well in sales. Elevated my future into management and national account sales and, you know, specialized construction sales. And that's what I was doing, and I enjoyed it. But what would you recommend? I mean, if there are builders and contractors who are listening who'd like to be able to do that, and we can talk about the quality work in a minute, but the quality of communication, that over-communicate idea, what specific steps do you think somebody could take to start, you know, using that technique? I think... I think the most important step is you have to make sure everybody's on the same page. Everybody in-house, everybody has to be on the same page and understand the importance of of, of your whole thought process, the over-communication. So some firms are going to have, you know, 200 people working for them. You got to get down to the nuts and bolts, the foundation of your business and and instill that in everybody's thought process. It has to be everybody first and foremost has to be on the same page because if the CEO and the VP and you, you know upper management understands, but your field guys that are physically boots on the ground making things happen every day aren't, then it, it's not going to work because you're going to have the communication gap in the field. Um, you, it just has to be instilled from the top to the bottom. And once that's done, you got to train every one of your people. And when I say people, your vendors, your subcontractors, every supplier, everybody you're dealing with. And then, you know, once it's instilled, it's so much easier. Hmm. Now, you're in Alabama, and Alabama is one of the states that just started taking steps towards enforcing performance testing and high-quality building and stuff with the 2009 International Energy conservation code what's that been like for you well it it just really rolled out the end of last year but you know everybody at the cities here in the local markets they're still a little behind you know and and some of the major renovations and commercial projects and new construction projects it's being implemented but even these guys everybody's still learning at this phase it's it's not fully implemented. Everybody's still trying to sort out the differences, but it it's making it real complicated for a lot of people because they're not accustomed to it. If you're doing, for example, if you're doing a commercial renovation, alteration, you know, if, if you change X percent, then you have to have an engineered stamp set of plans for the electrical, for the plumbing, for the HVAC. Make sure your doors, windows, storefront glass, whatnot meets these codes. And you know, for a lot of guys, 
you know, it's too hard to do that and, and go over all that with the customer. You have your select few, you know, that don't have a problem with it and it, they take it for the better and, and make the move to, to be the guy that can handle it. But it's still a big curve here, what I see in this market. Hmm. How has the uh, approach to buildings and specifically uh, on homes changed with your clientele? Like, are there new techniques that you're adopting or new methods, materials, things like that? Yes, we're trying to educate ourselves to the best of our ability to make sure we are providing the best service, even if it means at a higher cost. Sometimes it's an extremely hard sell if, if the client's looking at the per square foot price. You know, it, it always goes back to, well, this guy can do it for this. And, you know, you, it's hard sometimes meeting with, with a client who has been referred, who, who comes down the pipe in the manner that, that we want them to, but you find yourself at the table and that's the conversations being had. You know, so and so can do it for this, or and you know that that they're not going to do it for that. They're going to do it for that until they get in, and then it's hammer time. It, the same. Everybody knows. Everybody in construction knows this. That guy that can do it for that, and that's their pitch. When the doors are open and they're in, as soon as they turn the corner, it's hammer time, and then it, they're back to square where we were starting from in the beginning, and. It's complicated, and sometimes, you know, it's in our best interest to tell those clients that we just, it's not a perfect fit for us. But if they need some help or they have problems in lieu of the project, you know, being being done, we'll come in and help them, or we'll come in and, and work with them. Is there a better way to train consumers to demand high quality and to be willing to pay for it than to have them make a bunch of crappy mistakes that then they have to... <laughs> That's a that's a good question, and to and to answer it, it's it's a complicated answer that I'm going to give you, and I'm going to do my best to give the answer. Everybody's different. Everybody's personality is different. Everybody has a different approach. Everybody's thought processes are different. Um, do I think that you could you could do that, and you could create a means to to educate people, and it would be worth them paying for? Absolutely, but. Where's the baseline? You know, pulling people out of just just being pummeled by a contractor. It, we help them figure out what's what. Where are you at? What has happened to this point? And, you know, sometimes you find yourself, you know, a contractor hasn't even permitted the job and they, they've they rewired the whole house or the contractor has done footings outside to do an addition and there's not even a permit that's been pulled. And these people are paying these contractors and there's not even a contract in place. So, you know, going back to your question, absolutely. There could be just a baseline of education and having a contract in place and understanding the contract, I think is half the battle of as at least a reference point, you know, but that falls back to my theory. A contract though, that's one of those things that I just press accept on my computer without reading it, right? Absolutely not. That's <laughs> That's 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 where the over communication exclamation point is, gets driven down in the beginning. You go above and beyond ensuring and making sure that everybody's on the same page. The communication's clear. Nobody, there, there's no gray area. Nobody wonders what am I going to get? How am I going to get it? It's detail oriented, you know. And I see a lot of a lot of bids where contractors price jobs. And even some of the big boys here in town, you know, I look at it and it's just a pile of line items with a rolled up number at the end with five zeros behind it. You know, one thing we try to do, we have a software system on all our jobs we bid. We come in and we itemize everything out. And there's a, you know, there's an overhead and profit number at the bottom line. There's no uh, misleading hidden agenda I don't care that you, you, I want you to see what I'm going to make. You know, there's no reason to hide it from you. I want you to see what you're going to pay for everything. Your foundation, your uh, structural engineer stamp on the foundation plan, the architect stamp on everything else, you know, your, your travertine or your tile going in your master bath. You, you know, I want you to know exactly what you're getting. And that goes back to that over communication thing. So every person bidding a job in your firm, does the same thing. It just 
takes all the unknowns out. Mm. So that, no, it's not an accept button. I, sometimes I guess everybody wishes it could be that simple, but you know, even some of the smaller little jobs you do, it's, it's critical to make sure. And, and we do government work, small and large, residential private work, small and large, commercial private work, small and large. And it just, it don't matter which one it is, you always, always go back to the over-communication and really trying to instill that. You still have 10%. I, I feel like my numbers are pretty accurate. 90% of whatnots are avoided, but you still have the 10. Like I said earlier, everybody's different. Mm. You know, you may deal with one person today that's retired in their 60s and don't know anything about the construction. And tomorrow you may be dealing with someone that's our age in their 30s and they watch DIY every night. And mm. they, they have a lot of ideas and, and they feel like they're really educated from the television shows and they want to be more involved and understand everything. But You watch enough of that TV, you feel like you have a master's degree, right? Some of these two, like, people two hours do. Some of these people do. <laughs> some, some of these people do. We're, we're doing a job right now. I'll, I'll give another illustration. It, one of these referrals, the, the homeowners were getting hosed. We were referred to come in we sort out the details, help them get back on track. And it's one of these customers they want to, you give them the bid, all inclusive. You're going to be the managing entity to eliminate all the headache. But they want to manage buying their granite and facilitate and install and go pick out a nice elaborate farmhouse sink and have it all situated, but yet that's not in my line items. That's We we redact that out of the contract because that's what they said they want to do. I want to help them. They've already been hosed. I'm doing all I can do because they were referred by a close friend whom I do a lot of work with, who's another attorney. You know, so it's my job when I leave there, they're my advertisement. I got to make sure it's square. But this particular couple, which is a great couple, uh, they watch it. They're educated. Uh, you know, they know what's going, you know, and you just have to work with them because a lot of times they don't. Mm. They see it on TV. They have the concept. They understand it to a particular point, but they don't understand. You, we're not at the end of the job yet. It's not time for the punch list. Mm. You know, just, just let us finish. Don't panic. Relax. And then we'll have all this and we'll go through this and we'll create the list at the end of the day. But I try my best as a contractor to train them step by step as we go and uh, make make sure, but it's just that communication thing. Because if you don't have that good communication, it can get sideways in a hurry. Mm. So You and I just met last night at a film screening, totally unrelated. We happened to start shooting the bull. And you, uh, after learning that you're a builder, you said a word that I was immediately like, I got to get you on my show. And you said enclosure. Will you please explain uh, what your experience with the enclosure is and why that became one of the first things out of your mouth? The, when, when you say enclosure, just to make sure we're on the same page, the reference, are we referencing the building concept enclosure Yes, like the building envelope. Yes, yeah, exactly. yes, yes. The the envelope. That's just that's that's a hot topic here in here in our market right now. And there's a couple of different options, and it's it's something that that I'm learning more and more about, and I'm aggressively trying to educate myself. There's, to my knowledge, not a class available around here that educates us or could offer. When I say us, the contractors in this market, I'm unaware of it. If there is one. But I find it, you know, really, really interesting. It's it's the new um, compliance codes, the, the new technology, the envelope, whether it be the zip system or whether it be your spray foam insulation. Uh, you, you know, doing this new construction, there's no question what's going on here is better business, better contracting skills being implemented for the homeowners. But the homeowners have no knowledge of, of, of this particular information here. Some do, but, I mean, they're the, the really educated ones that are paying for it and don't mind paying for it. 
the average ones that are looking at the bottom line are just overlooking it. Mm. But the enclosure, the envelope, and it's, it's weird. You know, we met last night. Um, I don't know how to explain it. Sometimes when things like this happen, you're just in the right place at the right time, conducting business or, or you know, working, communicating with people, and you get to know one another. But it's uh, <laughs> not to get off topic. The enclosure, the envelope, it's, you know, just having general conversation. That's that's something like on fresh topic on the docket in our department, mm. you, you know, and on a couple of projects here. That, that we're getting geared up to do or we've been in the middle of bidding with or against or or bidding on and we're seeing it. You know, if, if you really, now if you're working inside the city and you're being monitored by the city building departments, they're going to, you have to make sure your that envelope is there. And, and the guys at the city, they're not as educated as some of the ones in your neighborhood more than likely, just because they're not accustomed to it. It's all new. It's just a rollout. However, you know, it, it affects everybody, the HVAC contractors, the electrical contractors. You know, I don't think it affects the plumbers as much, but it, and, and the framers, the, the guys actually putting the building together and creating the envelope. It's, it's interesting. Keep an eye on those plumbers, by the way. They do make a bigger impact than you think. <laughs> I'm, you're, you're educating me this, this morning. I'm being educated as well, so... Um, it's, it's more for me to know and more for me to learn to, to better our firm and be able to stand apart a little further, you know, in our qualities. How do you, so now that you understand that the envelope and the way that I generally always look at it is the envelope is the most important part of the building now with the, the new codes and all that stuff. Um, how do you educate your clients about something that you're going to hide but behind sheathing products? Like they're not actually going to see the envelope how, how, do you, how do you explain, like, oh, we're going to do something a little bit more expensive, and here is why? That's a good question. Um, but what I go to every, every time so far that I've gotten into the conversation, the direct way I explain it is, you know, you will see it in the process of being done. You will not see it after that. But the only place you will see a reflection is on your power bill. Um, it, it's the insulation properties and, and your, everything going into your project being more functional, lasting longer, being more viable for just day to day for you. It, it's all going to be more energy efficient, mm. you, you know, and some people take it and really dive into it. And, and the more educated people will, will research it a little bit and, and try to educate themselves a little more on it before we have the next meeting. And some of the others just, you know, depending on where the referral came in, they trust your judgment. And, okay, that sounds great. Just make sure we can clearly see exactly what's taking place. And, and we know, you know, so when you come in and you do your project, we pretty much have a warranty package where we know exactly. And we do well at that. And that's perfectly fine. But to, once again, you know, boil it back down, it just gets right back down to the communication thing. What are you excited about in uh, the next couple of years in Alabama construction? I'm seeing a trend here, and, and I'm not a huge contractor. Um, my business is, is, is a decent size here. Uh, but what I'm most excited about, we have some clients in, in infancy stages of restaurant. You, you know, these guys are trying to develop some franchise. They have really sound business plans. And... And based on that over communication and based on being that guy, you know, when the, both these outfits got hammered round one and round two with contractors. And this year and this past year, we came in to do projects for them and they were just like, wow, this is a breath of fresh air. You know, the, the reflection of over communicating speaks for itself when they greet you every day and bring your crew's lunch and whatnot. They go out of the way to make sure that you know they appreciate what you're doing because the past two experiences with both of them was horrible. So looking forward here, you know, we just, it, it looks like we have some huge opportunities coming down the pipe and uh, I'm blessed, blessed to have them. And I just don't want to miss an opportunity. Uh, I, I don't want to let anybody down. You know, we're in the stages right now doing assessments in markets in different areas of the state. 
for them to launch five new locations or two new locations. So, it, you know, my thing, if I can be that guy that my clients value the most for the over-communication, I really think that is the foundation of where the doors were open for me to go to the next level with these guys. I, I just want to do all I can to cherish that relationship and, and you know, make sure everybody stays happy and do all I can do to, to make it happen for them. That's what I'm looking forward to the most here in the next couple of years. It just seems like the work is, you know, it, it, it's only getting more, getting to the point of more work, larger jobs, you know, more volume. And I give a lot of credit. You know, we've talked a lot about the over-communicating. And a lot of times, Corbett, I get jobs that five people are looking at because I'm the only guy that shows up when I say I will and turns an estimate in when I say I will. And guess what? Those clients don't care if you're 20% higher because they know before you ever get started, you do what you say you're going to do. Mm. And I think that means a lot. I, I hear a lot of contractors still complaining about there not being a lot of work. However, every week I'm having the conversations on the opposite side of the spectrum where the clients are saying, you're the only one that's sent, you know, you're the only guy that you, you brought your architect out here yesterday the day after we called you, it, we're waiting on bids for the last 90 days from three other contractors. Mm. We want to use you. Yeah. Let's dial the numbers in and make sure we're on the same page. And uh, we really don't want to talk to anybody else. So I've, that base goes right back down over communication. You know, and it's, it works for me. Uh, and it's real simple. Chase, thank you so much for being on the show. Absolutely. Thank do you. do what he says, ladies and gentlemen. Chase Ming is the founder of All Development in Montgomery, Alabama. You've been listening to the Building Performance Podcast from Green Dream Group in Chicago. I'm Corbett Lunsford. Tune in next time.